to talk about notational invariance of a standard model in our most recent finding. But uh, because this is, a, though, an old field, one that is often new to many people who haven't discovered it before, uh, I'd like to take a few <coughs> moments to go through a historical survey. So notational invariance is actually quite old. It dates back to the 17th century with the work of Galileo, who discovered that actually you can replace a velocity by a velocity minus an arbitrary velocity if it doesn't change. And inductively, you can then add more and more letters to it, and your equations don't change. However, this is quite limited, because it required that your letters don't change over time. But it did prompt a revolutionary breakthrough by Leibniz. Namely, he saw that F equals P dot for Newton, also equals dp dt. And it completely opened the field to new discoveries, extended greatly by other great physicists, Lagrange, who discovered P prime notation, and Euler, who discovered the D sub T. <laughs> this development continued throughout the, the modern era. In the 19th century, we saw great progress in Fletcher and Morton, who studied spherical harmonics, and saw rather surprisingly that C, J1, J2, J, M1, M2, M, etc. are all equal. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps the most interesting discovery was the first discovery of left-right chiral symmetry. Namely, the J1, M1, J2, M2, J, M is the same as J, M, J1, M1. <laughs> this, of course, continued into the 20th century in quantum physics. Many people contributed to the field, but I'd just like to highlight some of the discoveries from Dirac. He extended the great work of his predecessors and discovered a new DCT. <laughs> and improved upon the work of Grassman with his bracket notation. <laughs> of course, the 20th century also saw a discovery of many particles. And this brought new discoveries in notational invariance, namely labeling invariance. <laughs> Though it was rather early discovered that the tau plus and the theta plus are the same whether you call them tau plus and theta plus or you call them k plus. <laughs> the JM side quickly <laughs> discovered to be also the same as the JM side. <laughs> the F and the D sub S, quite important to flavor physics these days, were also found to be equivalent. And the sigma on the F0400, oh, sorry, the F0600, F0500. Um, and many other discoveries, even up to the modern day. So, now I'd like to jump to an example. So let's look at a rather simple one. The scattering of E plus and minus into mu plus and minus near the Z0 resonance. So this is E plus and minus annihilating to a Z0, which then decays into mu plus and minus. And we'll make a small change in this notation by epsilon. Namely, we'll look at the propagators. So we have here on the left, propagator mz squared minus pz squared minus i epsilon. And on the right here, a small change of epsilon. <laughs> <laughs> minus mz squared minus i epsilon. And we make a calculation of the spectrum uh, given these differently notated propagators. So we've done that here in America. Uh, you'll see here in the red thick band is given the propagator on the left. And the dashed blue line <laughs> is the propagator on the right. Here we see the difference between them, given today's experimental uncertainties on the mass of <laughs> where we've assumed no correlation between the mass and width, given the two notations. I'd also like to point out some side work uh, we're working on related to notational invariance, namely that. This equation holds whether you call it the Z0 or the Z0, which curiously is both a vocal gauge symmetry. <laughs> and a global symmetry. So I'd like to conclude with our current work, namely a grand unified theory that we've reached through notational invariance. It's based on the symmetry group SO2, which is the symmetry group of special orthographies on two-dimensional machines. <laughs> and we show our complete theory here, which solves all outstanding questions in particle physics. And actually, it's pretty much a theory in our time. And I'll show it in the commonly used box notation, which I see in many conferences these days. So here we take the standard model. <laughs> and we have to, it's a very important 
<laughs> and of course, the police should come to it. <laughs> and well, pretty much where everything's obvious. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. 